Uh, my name is Sarah Whitmore, and this is my presentation on classroom technology. Um, I'm going to tell you about using mobile learning devices in the classroom and what benefits it can have. Um, to start with, the problem is that 21st century technology is changing rapidly, and our schools aren't necessarily doing the best job of keeping up with that change. Um, our schools need to be changing with it to best prepare these students to be the most success, successful members of society that they can be. Um, the more used to technology that they get, um, the more they will be able to use that technology in real world applications. And overall, as our job as educators, um, we are preparing our students for the best future that they can have. So I think technology is a very important thing um, to implement in order to make that change come true. Um, the solution is to introduce and implement technology into as many K-12 classrooms as possible so that children can learn early in life how to adapt in the ever-changing technology world. Um, I emphasize K-12 because this is not something that we should wait until high school to introduce to our students. Um, it's not even something that should wait till fifth or sixth grade, you know, when we think that students are ready to embrace technology because um, these students are around technology all the time, whether that's their parents have it at home, you know, there is no way that they can escape it. Um, so it's better to just address it and let them have access to it. Don't hide them from it and in the end that will just hinder them. Um, so let's talk about early intervention. So early intervention is generally a term commonly used for providing students with learning disabilities the aid that they need as early as possible. Um, we can use that same technique since it has been proven successful. Um, we can use it on students without learning disabilities necessarily. Um, we could use it on children with technology in general. Uh, if you intervene early enough to teach them this technology, since they already have access to it, you might as well make it educational. Um, it w I believe that it will produce a more successful learning environment with technology. Technology won't be a distraction anymore. It can be used as a tool for learning. Um, the impact that we could potentially see by bringing technology into the classroom um, is increased student-teacher engagement. And what I mean by this is, is that the teacher will no longer be doing lectures, or at least lecture time will be limited. Um, instead, you can focus on projects, hands-on activities, um, whether they are app-based or just simply you know, collaboratively using a tablet or laptop. Um, technology can be a good way to bring students and teachers together in an interactive way. Um, I also believe that attendance would increase because students would be more interested in coming to class if there is technology. Um, why would they want to come to class to stare at a textbook or watch you write something on a chalkboard or whiteboard uh, when they could go home and play on their tablet or their computer or watch TV? You know, technology is such a distraction that if you make it the center of their attention in their education, then it can be a positive thing. Um, this way, also, 21st century skills are learned and applied. Um, not only do we just teach them about technology and about the, the web and how to access everything and all the news and information that is out there, um, but we are actually giving them practice at it. Uh, they can learn how to use it. It is applied. They get used to it. It is second nature to them at that point. Um, this also encourages better social relationship and technological skills in the classroom. Um, you can encourage your students to work together in groups. Uh, they can work on projects together from their different individual um, tablets, I would say, would be a good tool to use. Um, they can also break language barriers. I mean, look at Google Translate. If a teacher is struggling to communicate with a student that speaks a different language, or if two students are trying to communicate and one doesn't speak English, you can use Google Translate in a way that you can communicate more efficiently. And that in and of itself cuts down on how much time you need to spend on altering your lessons to fit that person's language. They can learn language tools by seeing that um, translation in progress. Um, 
students who only speak English may also benefit from it. They might start to learn different languages if they're constantly interacting with somebody and using Google Translate to see what it is in English and then also what it is in, say, Spanish. Um, tablets in the classroom, I think, is probably the easiest and best idea. Um, devices such as Windows Surface allow for more user-friendly interactive lectures. Um, you can do handwritten notes on them with a little pen. Um, you can highlight things, you can zoom, you can kind of manipulate the text however you need to to learn the best and remember the information the best. Um, you can also multitask by having different apps open at the same time and switching between windows. Um, so it makes learning catered and altered to what that particular student needs to learn best. Um, this cost can range from 25000 per class of 30. Um, that's for Windows Surfaces, which are a very universal and interactive tool, um, probably the best one that you could have as far as tablets go. Um, you could also get a cheap tablet. You can get them for, you can get an Amazon Fire for as low as $50 a piece. Um, these would be good for your younger classes who don't need to use as much. Um, and it would total for a class of 30 about $1,500, which is very affordable if you look at the cost spent on textbooks each year, which averages to be around $250 per student. Um, so we'll come back and talk about that in a second. Um, so technology is very environmentally friendly as well, which personally I really like that. Um, tech Textbooks can now be digital, so you don't need to purchase a new one every few years. Um, if you consider the costs, again, um, if it's $250 per, per year on new textbooks, and if this textbook is constantly updating with new information, schools are going to spend more money over a long period of time to buy new textbooks when you could just have a tablet that was worth $250 and just update the, the material in it. Um, it's easier to update something than reprint a whole textbook. Um, it also saves on obviously how many trees are cut down and used to print these textbooks. Um, technology can also be mobile, um, so you can take it outside on field trips and anywhere on campus. So that kind of makes it a versatile classroom. Um, it might also inspire your students to learn outside of the classroom because if they are excited about using the technology in class, they might want to take it home and, you know, show their parents or their friends and use it outside of class, you know, practice what they learned, use that technology in the real world. And I think that's an incredible tool that we should definitely look into. So as a whole, I think that this is a very um, effective tool. And as far as implementing it goes, uh, it can be a little overwhelming at first, but I think that you can swap one classroom activity in at a time. Um, so this could mean that like simple activities start with making music or uh, creating assignments through apps um, that allow students to use like video and photo apps on their device. Um, you can also have them take notes. That's just kind of a good way of introducing the technology to them without overwhelming them with it. Um, and then you can introduce like little things at a time, start having them take quizzes on their tablet or start having them read their lectures or watch lecture videos on them. Um, so it's an easy thing to implement as long as you can afford it. Um, once it's in the classroom, you can just kind of go into it step by step, um, lecture by lecture.